it's me, Stormy, and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. Before we jump in, Libra, I want to let you know that the yearly birthday appointments are up. You want to click in the description box down below, take advantage of your birthday appointment. You book your appointment by your sun sign, and this is my once a year gift to you. With so many changes coming in 2018 for Stormy Grace, I wanted to make sure for sure, for sure, I got the birthday appointments in. So click there, grab your spot before they're gone, because when they're done, that's it. That's the game. All right, Libra. Now, 2017, we had some planets do some really nice sign changes, and we're going to work with that energy as we move through 2018. One of those we're actually going to work with until 2020, and that is Saturn. Saturn take this, took, take, took this move out of Sagittarius into the energy of achievement and structural and comfortable energy of Capricorn because Saturn rules Capricorn, so it's very comfortable here. Now for you, it made this move into your fourth house. So this is home, family, real estate, property, um, internal, the foundational beliefs and ideas that you have, setting down roots, things with your parents, maybe your mother or somebody in your home, all of these things come into play. And Saturn is the energy of, it's called the taskmaster. And I don't teach fear-based astrology, so Saturn's not coming to just like make your life awful. But what Saturn is coming to do is to take your spiritual maturity level to the next level. And the way that we do that is by growing via practice over and over and over again with lessons in our lives. And for you in the fourth house setting, it's going to be around this family domestic zone. So one of the things, what does it look like when Saturn's been transiting there. It does not matter how old you are. It does not matter, Libra, how much of a cool person you think you are, how together you think you have your life. None of those things matter when Saturn comes around because it is about showing you where you have to grow with your lessons that are coming up. And it's all about connecting and creating for yourself this strong place to build a life on, a foundation, roots, a place that you can grow from. Now you spent the last two and a half years with Saturn and Sagittarius finding your voice, speaking up for what you want, making your mind up about some things, and now you have to put those plans into action and allow them to grow because this is the next 29 years of your life that you are building a foundation, that you are building this family area around. So that's pretty interesting important, don't you think? Now, one of the things that it could be happening here in this, there's many options. I'm going to talk through all of them, actually. One of the things I think that could be happening here is the place that I always go first, is that these are the foundational ideas and beliefs that you build a life on, that you think from, that you believe from. Now, we have ones that we were given when we were a child, and they can be ideas around everything, family, faith, all sorts of things, right? And we go out and we build these life on them. And then you find out as you grow up, you're like, huh, I have some different beliefs. I have some different values. So you could watch those changing over the next three years and consistently, especially in your home area and what you believe family is, what you believe about your past, what you believe about your future. You could find yourself walking into different situations that pull these lessons to the surface and you have to consider what you consider about those things anymore. So the internal unconscious subconscious energies could definitely be changing so that you can set a new foundation. Now, one of the other things I think is really, really big, especially being in Capricorn energy, is that this could be something with parents, right? Parents or family, maybe you have, you know, Time is moving on. Maybe your family members are getting older. Maybe you've been taking care of a parent or something like that and something is changing with them or it's needing more of your attention, almost to the point where it feels a little bit limiting, maybe even oppressive and you're like, oh man, I'm having to change my whole life to take care of this person. And this could also be, you know, maybe somebody is leaving your house in some way, shape or form and it kind of, you feel less secure without that person there, right? You could be going through a divorce and, and that energy changes. Um, you could have family move in and it's like, oh, wait, I have a one bedroom for six people. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, the situation that comes up in this area with this here is going to be about domestic obligation. And if you lean into Saturn's energy, work with Saturn, not against it, say, okay, 
This is happening to me because I'm capable. If you take that attitude as you come out of this transit and every day during it, you can have a bigger deep breath to take care of the responsibilities you need to take care of, okay? Now, another thing that I'm thinking is that really because this is traditionally during a Saturn transit uh, in the fourth house, I don't always see people moving, but I do think for you that there's a possibility that maybe something connected to work does have you um, wanting or needing to make a move in some way, shape, or form. That's possible. I don't know that I think that that's the biggest thing that will be happening for you, but I do want to put it out there as a possibility. Now, one thing I do think, because it's about structural resetting and change, you could, in your current property or current space that you're living in, be rebuilding a structure, re renovating, remodeling, redesigning in some way, shape, or form. But whatever it is, it's about making this feel like your space and you step up to that domestic responsibility. Now you're going to work with this energy, like I said, for approximately three years until 2020. And at the end, the idea is that you come out in this le next level of maturity where you can handle the situations around you. You have created a foundation for yourself, right? And that's a beautiful set of mastery over this, this particular place in your life. Now we also had Jupiter make a move as well out of Libra, out of your sign. So now it's in a space where it's not so much about partnerships, it's about depth, it's about sex, it's about um, what's beneath the surface. It's about, um, for you, actually, one of the things I think is so great is that this is happening in the second house. Jupiter in Scorpio sits in the second house for Libra. So this is fortunate energy because Jupiter is big. He wants you to expand, but he also wants you to expand out Libra, right? So he's like, get out there. I'm trying to show you new places for passive income. I'm trying to show you new ways to make money. And in fact, I'm dropping you these opportunities. Get off your bum cakes and let's go get it, right? So what does this look like? Jupiter in Scorpio for the year year basically until November before it moves on, you have the opportunity to get a promotion at work. Maybe you, maybe not even the promotion, maybe you get the raise, maybe you get the promotion and the raise. You know what I'm saying? You find a different way to uncover some kind of talent that you have and you start to be able to make money with it. Um, you could just see your cash flow kind of get a boost. I will tell you, especially in July, where we've got um, a solar eclipse happening in your career sector, you could have something going on really in a professional capacity that takes you to the next level. Now, one thing I think you have to think about is that with all of the energy of the fourth house stuff going on with Saturn, you could get all of this extra money and you're like, yes, I've arrived. And really that money needs to be applied to take care of something with your home or your family or your property. So don't just be wise with it is what I'm saying. Pay attention to what you're doing with this financial increase that could be coming your way because you have to find the balance of what you're doing between this fourth house space and your finances, okay? Now, other things that I'm thinking about, um, when you're looking at resources that are not your own, right? This is this nice eighth house energy. We've got Uranus moving out of the sign of Aries, so out of the partnership sector for you, bringing new partnerships is what it was all about, um, and into the eighth house place. So money that you get from sources that you didn't necessarily earn it, but it's coming to you, these are gonna take a shift, right? Because Uranus comes to break structures. So yes, in May, May 15th to November 6th is when Uranus is in Taurus. You could see some money come your way. You could see some kind of windfall or you get a money back or you, you get tax money back or you overpaid for something or maybe the judge decides you really don't need to pay that much alimony, you pay less. Something like that could be coming back to you. But the other thing I think that happens is you do have to be careful. If you have had any tax things that you didn't pay your taxes or you did pay less or something like that, you could find that Uranus is bringing this to the surface and these people want their money. Now, another thing that I think is possible is that because it has to do with joint resource things, a spouse, a partner, any place where you're partnering with money, you could see them have a shift in their finances, right? So let's say that your partner loses their job. That's going to be a definite change in the finances. And thank goodness you're getting a boost over here because you may need to take care of some things. Or maybe they they go on ahead and they have an increase in their finances and you're like, boom, we've got this. Whatever it is, in the joint places where there's intimacy, you have the opportunity to have a lot of new experiences and they're very innovative, but they're also very intuitive. So it's like, what do we do with this creative solutioning around all of these things? I will tell you too that I do think that in terms of being a single Libra, 
this year, there's a significant amount of change that comes with the eclipse cycles that we'll be having this year because they're basically still in Leo and Aquarian energies. And these eclipse cycles that we'll be having in 2018 are related to an eclipse cycle that started back in 2016. So what were you manifesting? What were you planning? What were you working on and trying to move towards then? And let's see where it's coming out now. Because as these eclipses happen between the 11th and the 5th houses, you're having the opportunity, Libra, if you want relationships in your life, you've done a lot of work around that, to pull in something that is one, very lasting, but two, also fun, also playful, bringing new friends to the table, new social groups. All of these things are going to be important because how are you going to use your Jupiter and Scorpio energy to make all of this new money if you won't put your products out to other people? This is going to be a really social time for you. These moons are bringing social energies to you, so make sure that you're using that. Now, we're also going to see Mars and Venus taking their retrogrades, and that's okay, it happens, but whenever Mars is retrograding, we're re-looking at actions that we're taking, right? We're re-looking at beliefs that we have. We're re-looking at the desires that we have. We're re-looking at where we need to initiate or move something. I always suggest during a Mars retrograde, if you can avoid any elective medical or surgical procedures, that's best. But if you can't, you do what you need to do. Now, when Venus is retrograde, relationships, no matter what house it's happening in, relationships come under a little bit of a squeeze. And so do finances, because you have to re, that's what a retrograde is. We're re-looking at, re-evaluating, reconsidering these things. For you, this Venus retrograde is gonna start out here in Scorpio in your second house, and then back up into your sign. So it's going to back up into you, where it's like, okay, what are you doing in relationships? How are you showing up? How are you valuing yourself? So by the time we get to October, you could also be re-looking at the prices of maybe a service or a product you put out there or something like that. So complete re-evaluation is going to be going on. Now, as we get ready to end the year, we're going to see Jupiter making that move from Scorpio into Sagittarius. So out of the second house, into the third house. You just had Saturn in this third house, so you will be communicating. Libra, you'll be using that big voice on this new foundation that you're forming to let us know what's up in Libra land, to communicate with siblings, neighbors, get that website going, write that thing, study something new so that you can add value to what it is that you're doing, and definitely making some big decisions that help put you out into the world. Your communication is about to get very busy as we head towards 2019. All right, Libra, let's get some dates going so that you know what the heck is going on. So right at the beginning of the year, as we're arriving in January the 31st, we've got a total lunar eclipse. This is happening in the energy of Leo, and this is happening in your 11th house. Now, the total of the lunar eclipse, the total part tells us this is a blotting out of your emotions, right? This is a blotting out, a reset for you. So a wonderful time to be looking at who is Team Libra? Who are you running with, right? Look at the five people around you. That's kind of where your track record of success is going. Are you hanging out with people where you're the smartest person in the room? Because if that's the case, you're in the wrong room. Level up, Libra, level up. Get some people who've got new knowledge and information for you. Look at the people who are in your tribe right now. Are they really Team Libra? Or do you need to just still love them, but kind of put some distance between that? At the same time in your socials, where are you? Do you have that website up? Where are you? Where can we find you? Where can we find your message, right? What are your long range goals, Libra? Have you sat down, pen to paper, got that plan going? Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you gonna get there, right? So this is a wonderful energy to take a reset to what's going on internally. Now, February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse. This is happening in the Aquarian energy. So fifth house, wonderful solar eclipse energy, new beginnings lasting six months up to a year. This is in the romance house, a place for children, a place for self-expression, creativity, play, um, investments, sports, gambling, any of these things that have this element of risk, and trust me, brand new love relationships have an element of risk. This is a wonderful time to put those intentions out there and also to get out there. Go play. What brings you joy? And if you don't know what brings you joy, it's a wonderful year to figure that out. Go take the naked art class. Go see what that's about. <laughs> see if you like it. Go to a different grocery store. Try these new things out just to go see if your joy is out there hiding under a rock or something. When we get to May 15th, we've got Uranus moving out of the sign of Aries into Taurus. It's going to be here in your eighth house until November. 
And then Uranus is going to take a retrograde and step back into Aries until 2019, and then it will give us a longer stint of Uranus in Taurus. So just here from May to November, we get a little flavor, a little taste of what Uranus is gonna do to kind of wake up this eighth house area for you, but it's gonna be a very important glimpse, so don't miss the information you get from the snippet, okay? June 26th to August 27th, we've got Mercury, excuse me, we've got Mars, going retrograde now it's doing this in the sign of libra i'm telling you your new beginnings um in the sign of aquarius i'm telling you your new beginnings romance children projects all of those things are going to come under some evaluation in terms of what action are you actually taking around them or what conflicts need to be resolved from this area as well when we get to July 13th, we've got the solar eclipse, and this one's happening in the sign of Cancer. I like this energy because, like I said before, this can be tied to your career and you're getting a promotion, a bonus, a little bit more money, or maybe you just finally launch your own company out there and you start to pull in a little bit of profit, or maybe you even find some passive income because now people kind of know who you are, you're getting your name out there. That could be really useful for you in the career and professional sector for sure. July 27th, we've got a total lunar eclipse. This is again in that Aquarian energy. So re-looking at that fifth house area, have you caught up with what's bringing you joy, right? Like what's happening for you? We're still looking at retrograde energy. So are you working it? Are you using it? Are you letting some things go? August 11th, we've got a solar eclipse in Leo. 11th house, new friends, new social things, new networking, a new long range plan for you to bring to the table. The 11th, the 11th house of socials gets very busy for you as we get to August. Now, October 5th through November 16th, we've got Venus retrograde in Scorpio to start. So over here in your second house, then it's gonna move back into Libra into your first house. So the relationships get tight here. Money may get tight. A reevaluation of every sense comes from this Venus being here. Now, remember, just because relationships and money get tight doesn't mean it's all wrong. It just means re-look at what you've got going on. Now, as we get to the end of the year, November 8th, Jupiter, our biggest benefic planet, is going to take that move into the sign of Sagittarius. So moving out of your second house, moving into your third house, getting you busy, getting you ready to communicate, getting you ready to show us your voice on fully. All right, Libras, it's going to be a great year. I look forward to walking through every week and every month with you. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in 2018 and in the birthday appointments. Bye, guys.